Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Lie Tree by Francis Hardinge. So as always, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs. I'm actually still reading it, so, you know, keep it under your hat, so to speak. And uh, then at the end, I'll give some more thoughts and uh, give it a rating. So, The Lie Tree. The leaves were cold and slightly clammy. There was no mistaking them. She had seen their likeness painstakingly sketched in her father's journal. This was his greatest secret, his treasure and his undoing. The Tree of Lies. Now it was hers, and the journey had never finished stretched out before her. When Fate's father is found dead under mysterious circumstances, she is determined to untangle the truth from the lies. Searching through his belongings for clues, she discovers a strange tree. A tree that feeds off whispered lies and bears fruit that reveals hidden secrets. But as Fate's untruths spiral out of control, she discovers that where lies seduce, truths shatter. So the very first thing I tabbed was the opening paragraph, which I think was fantastic. Chapter 1, Exiles. The boat moved with a nauseous, relentless rhythm, like someone chewing on a rotten tooth. The islands just visible through the mist also looked like teeth, Faith decided. Not fine, clean Dover teeth, but jaded, broken teeth, jutting crookedly amid the wash of the choppy grey sea. The mail boat chugged its dogged way through the waves, greasing the sky with smoke. Pretty good opening paragraph there. And then we have the moment where, basically, the, 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 the Reverend, who is Faith's father, uh, is, or at least I think he is, is taking a bunch of belongings to where they're moving and they don't have enough room for one of the crates on like the the wagon so so he gets his daughter to walk in the rain <clears throat> and so so he can get this last crate on which is just super harsh but uh, a pretty good way of depicting this guy's character i think all right we're going old school because i lost my camera i've just misplaced it i haven't lost it um so i'm shooting on my iphone so i can't see if i'm in shot i can't even see if i've run out of space but we're going to give this a go anyway. So, continuing on with The Lie Tree by Francis Hardinge. So I think this is interesting. This kind of helps to give it some context. Uh, Miss, Miss Hunter says, There's also, There is always so much trouble when you mix two lots of servants. We all know how they got it. And uh, that's why the family, as they've travelled, they've not taken their old servants with them because they don't want the family gossip to follow them, you know? She's talking to Paul, who he kind of... He's working with the like fledgling kind of photography industry. And he's talking about how he takes photos of, like, dead babies, basically. But, like, it was the done thing back in the day. You'd all, you know, not necessarily any babies. Any person in the family who died, you would pose them and get one last photograph, you know? This is uh, Faith talking about her father. And, and this reminds me of me, actually. Faith felt her neck and shoulders tense. When her father was in his darker moods, his path needed to be smoothed with the greatest care. He was not a violent man, but if he made a decision in a cold rage, he would keep to it ever after. And that, yeah, there have been times when I've made decisions in a cold rage. And then uh, Faith has a look in her father's boxes and he gets pretty angry. He has this great line, actually. He said, you had the ungodly temerity to pry through my papers. Um, and then this kind of, I guess, gives you a feel for, like, the cultural mores or whatever. He says to his daughter, bear in mind, it seems I must judge you anew. I had thought you were a dutiful daughter, with an honest heart and a keen sense of what she owes to her elders and betters. I had not thought you capable of this skulking, deceitful behaviour. Evidently your character has been allowed to drift dangerously astray. Honesty is commendable in a man, but in a woman or girl it is essential if she is to have any worth at all. Listen, Faith, a girl cannot be brave or clever or skilled as a boy can. If she is not good, she is nothing. Do you understand? Jesus. Alright, Dad. And then um, basically the father dies and there's a suggestion it might be suicide and that's not good news in this society, you know. And we have here chapter 13. I really like this. This shows how the Victorians dealt with death. It was a house of the dead now. All the curtains were drawn. Dark cloth was draped over every mirror like a dull lid drooped over every eye. The hair was heavy, so heavy that Faith thought the whole house might sink into the ground. Voices were hushed, fragile and moth-like. Footsteps were trespassers. And yet all afternoon people came to visit, on foot and on horseback, even to the despised Sunderley household. For there was death in the house, and death was a business. And uh, so then we, we get a bit of the drama here. So, uh, they can't bury him here, said one of the men at the heart of the group. He was tall and strongly built, with dark hair and a pugnacious face. Faith recognised him at once. It was Tom Paris, who had startled her by chance in the woods at Bull Cove. Tom Paris, whose son had been caught in the Reverend's trap. What do you mean, Tom? The curate looked flabbergasted. Why ever not? This is holy ground, Tom answered curtly. No suicides. That Sunderly threw himself off a cliff, and we don't care who says different. 
we know where he was found. And so then they sort of have to wait until there's like an inquest into the death before they know whether they can bury him or not. And so then Myrtle, who is the wife, she says, um, well, Faith, the kid, she suggests, why can we not go back to home to Kent and bury father there? Do you think people would not ask the same questions there? Snapped Myrtle. A sudden death right after a breaking scandal. Other doctors would be called in to examine him, and they might not be as reasonable as Dr. Jackler's. No, by the time he returned to the mainland, your father must be decently buried, with a doctor's testimony that he died of an accident, so that nobody could argue. The burial must be here, and it must be today. And then Faith starts to read her father's journals and to discover what... Although the title is The Lie Tree, uh, her father calls it The Mendacity Tree, which I kind of think she should have gone with for the, the, no the title of the novel, but... So we have this little bit between Faith and the Doctor. The Doctor says, I can see, continued the Doctor, with what was probably meant as gentleness, that you do not wish to believe that your father ended his own life. I find it hard to believe that he would do so, Faith answered, and impossible to believe that he would do so clumsily. And uh, then she says, perhaps it's a murder, and then this happens. I quite understand the appeal, the Doctor went on indulgently. Why suffer dull reality when you might have kidnaps, murders, family secrets, and hidden passages aplenty, eh? And so you young ladies come to the coroners with your heads full of fantasies and phantasms, overheated notions and wild suspicions. I'm surprised they all fit into our little female schools, Faith responded a little tartly. She saw the Doctor Blanche, but pushed on earnestly. And then we get this little bit, which uh, I, th I think is quite interesting. You said we could live on your dowry, she said, with a pained grimace. There will be no dowry, Faith. No money for Howard's education, not even money for food. If he had died in a natural way, we would have his savings, but suicide is a crime. The moment the inquest finds your father guilty of self-murder, everything he owns will be confiscated by the crown. Faith stared at her open-mouthed. At last she began to understand her mother's determination to lie about the place where the body was found, and her uncle's cryptic remarks about taking control of her father's possessions so that they would not be lost. But why should we be punished? That is cruel and makes no sense. The world is cruel and makes no sense, Myrtle answered bitterly. So here we have some good news from the doctors if you're worried about malaria and you like a little bit of a tipple. Some people think you have a weakness for gin, Mrs. Lambent, but I'm sure Dr. Jackless knows better. He is your doctor, so I'm sure he knows why you have fevers year in, year out. Maybe it was even Dr. Jackless who told you that gin and tonic could be used to treat malaria. Myrtle gets this great little line here. Why is it that the sweet-tempered men never have any money? And then finally here we've also got a little promo for Cuckoo Song, which is another Francis Hardinge novel. And I flagged that because this is a note to myself to add the rest of her books to my wish list because I really liked her writing style. I thought it was really cool. Um, you got like this weird range of genres here, really. So a bit of historical fiction, a bit of literary fiction, a bit of YA, a bit of thriller, a bit of like mystery. And throughout it, you've got this kind of underlying thing of the lie tree, the tree that... You tell a lie to, and then uh, it bears fruit if that lie is then spread. And so you start to see the effects of the lies on all the small, you know, the small community in, in which this is set. So I thought it was really well done, really well executed, and a cool idea as well. And uh, yeah, I gave it a 4.25 out of 5. So for me, the only real thing was like for the first 50 odd pages or so, it kind of was a bit slow for me, but then I, I got absorbed into it. And even then, the writing was beautiful, it's just that the plot took a little while to, to heat up. But stick with it and uh, you'll enjoy it. So you have it, that's what I made of The Lie Tree by Francis Hardinge. As always, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.